Meadows and Makers podcast. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Greg Dowd. I'm also known as Making Stuff here in the community, in the Hive community. And uh, today I have on a guest that I put a call out on Twitter and he answered my call trying to look for fellow agorists that are out there and that are uh, doing some cool projects and have products that they have to offer. And uh, wanted to get to talk to Shane tonight and get to know more about him and what he's got going on. He's also, he does uh, Liberty Under the Ta Under Attack publications. Uh, he's got a project called uh, Pasnia and Pasnia.com. And um, he also is the host of the Vonu podcast. I have uh, uh, got the book actually as a recommendation from Shane and uh, kind of led me down part of my journey. So uh, with that, welcome, Shane. How are you doing? Hey, man. Hey, man. Um, I'm doing uh, quite well. Um, that's uh, it's all great to hear. I'm happy. Uh, happy from you're familiar with Fondue, and you actually pronounced it correct, um, which is uh, which is funny. We found that out. Um, we got uh, got a publication. Um, it was a couple years into the podcast, and uh, it actually had like the pronunciation, you know, written out. I was like, oh shit, we've been pronouncing it wrong for two years, but oh well, we'll just we'll just roll with it. So, um, yeah, you did it right. So you're you're better. I mean, yeah, you're yeah, you got it right, and and I run the podcast. So what does that say? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your schedule to join me tonight for the podcast. Uh, if you would uh, to just give it uh, an introduce yourself give us a mm -hmm. give us a little introduction about uh who you are how how did you get uh how did you get started how did you get inspired to uh go on the journey that you're currently on and and talk about self-liberation and start the Vonu podcast like how did that how did that all start yeah um yeah so basically um i uh, i started elio radio back in february of 2015 um, I guess I'll, I'll jump in there. It was started. I started it as uh, um, at that time it was, it was supposed to be a replacement to Bill Cooper's uh, podcast that um, ran through the 1990s. It was one of the biggest conspiratorial ones. Um, but uh, um, I found anarchism, um, you know, a few months after starting it. And, uh, um, you know, obviously went down, you know, the Austrian economics, the philosophy, you know, the anarchist philosophy rabbit holes and read a bunch of books. And, um, you know, towards the end of 2015. I, uh, you know, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, obviously free markets are the way to go. Coercion's bad. Like, what are we doing about it, guys? Like, what's, what, what, what are we going to do about the, about, about the, about the state? Um, about, you know, coercion. And, uh, you know, the outside of the gorism, there really, really wasn't a whole lot of discussion that I found, um, back in, back in 2015. So that's what I've been doing since then is, is focusing on, um, solutions to increase personal freedom. And then, um, over the course of that, uh, you know, exploration, I found Vonnie, the search for personal freedom on Amazon. It was a book. Um, didn't really know anything about it. And, uh, it was $30, which was a steep price, uh, compared to a lot of the prices of like a lot of the books on Austrian economics, you can pick up for like five bucks. So like 30 bucks is pretty expensive for books back in, at least back in that day when I was in high level indoctrination, uh, my, my term for college. Um, so, um, yeah, I stumbled across, uh, you know, Vanu, um, that book and, uh, read it and, uh, my, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Kyle Ridden and I uh, decided to digitize it. Um, and uh, you know, put it out in PDF and audiobook format. And uh, then soon after, you know, I, I mean, that entire process, you know, from from digitizing it, which means manually typing it into a Word document, um, then proofreading it two or three times to make sure it didn't look like shit um, before we released it publicly. <laughs> and uh, um, then you know, recording the audiobook, which was obviously pretty time consuming, and then editing. So I read it, I read it, you know, five or six times. And then um, by <clears throat> yeah, January of 2018, I think it was. Um, I, uh, you know, I kind of, uh, I wanted Kyle to uh, be a co-host on, on LUA, LUA Radio, which is now just Liberty Tech Publications, but uh, I was trying to get him to be a co-host on LUA Radio, but I couldn't convince him to, to do it. Um, so I was like, all right, well, F that, um, just we'll start the Vanu podcast and do that instead. So we, we started, we started Vanu and um, that was, that was kind of the, the start to my, my journey of self-liberation too. Like a, the, the podcast was an exploration of this freedom strategy, um, you know, from the 1960s and um yeah kind of tracking my progress through um through i guess uh trying to work towards a liberated lifestyle as like as i call it so um yeah that's kind of uh where i'm at now i'm, I'm on a 22 acre homestead on in what i call the, the free republic of pasnia i uh it's uh like i was saying in pre-show the, the way that i explain it usually is an hour and a half northeast of st louis um in the in the u.s for for those that are uh, in the states 
But uh, yeah, I raise uh, um, chickens, ducks, turkeys. I've got uh, goats and lambs, and um, we've got uh, a bunch of bunnies. And uh, we're we're really just trying to hammer home on the food self sufficiency, uh, food self sufficiency. Um, but uh, you know, also um, Aura, my free mate here, she she makes uh, a lot of salves and uh, you know medicinal things. Um, and uh, so we we do a lot of that stuff here. Grow a lot of the you know plant medicines and things as well. So um, really, all, it's all, the name of the game now is is uh, self sufficiency. And um, obviously, at the Free Republic of Pasnia, uh, you know, building out this decentralized Psych Realm network. Um, that's uh, which I'm sure we can we can talk more about. But uh, um, that's a little bit of an introduction, and we can kind of go wherever you want to from this point. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, the Vonu book. Uh, I actually remember picking that up from you. I think uh, seeing that along the way at some point and this guy i guess he was like from the 1970s or mm -hmm. something like that and then he had uh i guess he was just writing all these letters or uh articles mm -hmm. to talk about ways of getting yourself free from the current system that we're living in and just all his like lessons learned along the way, I guess, and and some some of the ideas and things that uh, could help you kind of like uh, kind of evade uh, scrutiny from the state, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and I find I find I came to the same conclusion, man. Like uh, um, agorism seems like the most effective way of taking action and creating a free society a, a society that that i would like to see you know free of coercion and violence and uh you know uh full of uh, voluntary relationships as you are acting in this economy you are taking away power from from the state um little by little and to me it's like it's like a ripple effect from there so um so yeah, with, with that, to me, is like you have to take complete personal responsibility to have freedom or to be, like you say, like to be self-liberated. And so how did you go about like uh, finding your homestead property and like how did you... Um, how did you get that process rolling? Did that happen immediately or was that something that you were looking for and you kind of uh, were moving, you moved in that direction, I guess, after you got the podcast going and got started and everything? Yeah. So um, honestly, like for, to, to be frank, it, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily planned. Um, so I mentioned in 2018, I, I, you know, I kind of started my own journey of self-liberation alongside the podcast. Well, I ended, I ended up uh, moving to Austin, Texas randomly for a month and a half and moving in with uh, my co-host on the Bonnie podcast, Cut Reardon. And um, then Cup, soon after, they, they had a pretty quick change of living situation, which I knew about. I, I knew it was, up, it was forthcoming. But uh, I had to find a new place to live pretty quick. So I, I, was, I ended up, uh, you know, having a tent camp uh, north of Austin and um, in uh, Liberty Hill, Texas, actually. So I was tent camping um, out of my car for um, a number of weeks, and um, then I had uh, my, my buddy Jason Henza was was driving down as he, he spends he spends half his time in Mexico and half the time half his time in um, the states, and um, he was driving down uh, to Acapulco, Mexico, and uh, I, I you know I had nowhere else to go, so I decided to hop in and go stay down in Acapulco for a month and a half um, in 2018. So I, I, I stayed down there for. Um, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty nuts. Um, it was, and all, yeah, all this was unplanned. Like again, all this was unplanned. It just kind of happened. I just kind of went with it. Um, so yeah, I ended up down yeah. there, um, got, uh, you know, got to know some of the anarchist community and, um, was planning on going back, was, was planning on going back and, you know, and doing more, um, in Mexico. Um, but unfortunately, um, pr pretty quick after I got back, um, I guess a couple, couple weeks before, uh, Anarcha Polka that year, um, John Galton, um, one of, uh, one of my friends that was, that, was, that, I, that I spent time with, um, was shot in Acapulco. Um, yeah. So I, I decided, yeah, not, yeah, to, I decided not to go back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lily. Um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of, I, yeah, I, him, I wasn't him and, him, him and Henzo were good friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. We spent a lot of time there. Yeah. We spent a lot of time, um, there at their place. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I got to go down there in 2020 and I got to meet Lily and, and, uh, heard a little bit of the story from her side of the things nice yeah she's she's pretty awesome yeah 
yeah she's she's uh yeah she's pretty awesome for sure um but um i guess uh so so yeah um i i yeah that was that was an incredible an incredible experience and obviously just a month and a half um you know it was super cheap to live there like i didn't have much money anyway so like it was nice like i I, I made it, you know, I made it work down there. Um, it was, I'm, yeah, I was able to make it work down there and it was, you know, living, I, li I, I, I was uh, living within like two blocks of the beach. So like every morning I'd just, you know, go walk out to the beach. It was, it was an incredible, oh, wow. incredible, incredible couple of months. Um, but, um, yeah, I ended up, uh, going back to Austin, um, to, and, and tent camp for a couple of weeks. And, um, there's, uh, um, there's a, a place I've been coming, um, in Southern Illinois, um, ever since I, I was, you know, for, forever. Uh, essentially, my dad bought property um, in this area uh, back in the late 80s, and uh, this piece of property came up for sale um, maybe like 10 years ago or something, and he snagged it up. Um, uh, and it was it was here, so like I, I decided like I wasn't really quite, quite sure what I was going to do um, after um, you know after not going back to Acapulco and not um, you know tent camping. So I came back here, and uh, um, yeah, just just never left. I guess is is the the long and short of it and uh just very slowly um i tried the first couple of years i tried uh, i tried chickens um first first year free range um didn't work out didn't work out um here and uh, but uh regardless i i i really didn't do much um like on the homesteading angle for for a couple of years um outside of just you know trying you know a half dozen birds or something but uh yeah that was that was pretty much up in 2020 um when i really went full bore on the homesteading and, and kind of the self-sufficiency stuff but um yeah, it wasn't planned. Um, uh, it definitely, definitely wasn't planned. Um, and yeah, I really just kind of, yeah, okay. I saw, I saw, I saw a big need. I, I, I started eating a pretty, a mostly meat diet. Um, and, um, yeah, 2019. So, um, I kind of fell, fell prey to the fear mongering about meat shortages, which never actually transpired. Um, just fear mongering, um, at least here where I am. But so, but yeah, the first thing I did was I went and got some lambs and goats. So, um, it was a good first impulse. Um, and it got everything else started, but, um, yeah, it wasn't planned. It was just, I just kind of, you know, fell into all this per se. Oh, wow. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, when you, when you say you, you, uh, you, you eat mostly meat, are you, are you going, are you still like mostly carnivore, I guess with your diet and have you seen like a lot of, uh, positive effects from, from doing that? Um, yeah, so um, initially, I think it was um, in large part like uh, carnivore is that they call it, like the ultimate elimination diet. Um, like there, are, people have a lot of like silly food allergies and stuff now nowadays. Like I, I, I did with some things. Um, like I can't, I don't do well with grains now that I found out because I stopped eating them. Um, but uh, so yeah, I mean, just from the the elimination part of it for sure. And um, I was eating a nose to tail carnivore, so I was eating you know beef liver and. Um, tongue and kidney and um, any organ I could get my you know my my, my teeth on per se um, um, really really enjoy um, testicles um, call them lands or I guess you know land scallops they kind of taste like scallops um, so yeah I was uh, yeah. I mean I, I definitely I definitely you know felt a lot better in the sense that like I'd, I'd cut out a lot of the shit that I, the shit that I was eating that was really really bad for me and I was fixing nutritional deficiencies with you know like beef liver like really good high quality beef liver so yeah I definitely saw um, definitely saw drastic, drastic improvements. Um, my mind cleared, you know, like, uh, people talk about brain fog. Like I, I know what that felt like. I didn't realize that I had it back then, um, because it was just day to day. Like it was just what I lived with. But after like getting rid of it, it was like, holy shit. I kind of lived in, I lived my life in like a daze, it seems like, and not like in a good way, like, like cannabis high or anything, just like in a daze and in a bad way. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I definitely saw, um, saw noticeable um improvements and i've slowly been working stuff back and um like i said my my freemate or she is she does a lot of uh, really incredible work on the gardens here and um i started i worked in squash last year um i uh eat broccoli um i guess yeah i don't know there's 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 a you know a number of things i've worked in that's um you know but yeah, that i've worked back in slowly but um yeah still still mostly meat still still a lot of meat for sure just yeah which is why we raise so okay. much here yeah yeah so yeah you listed off several different animals that you're raising uh was that uh i, I guess that was a pretty i guess you kind of did that on the fly you were saying you kind of uh got all those animals pretty pretty quickly or was that kind of a slow process man like it was it's 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 worked out so smoothly and easily that like 
Um, so, so basically, my lamb guy lives like five minutes away. I don't really need him anymore because I have enough lambs now that they they we've had two two baby lambs and one goat this year. So we're hoping we can just populate the property with our our female lambs now. But uh, my lamb guy's like five minutes. I can get lambs any time from him. And uh, the first year I got lambs from him, he's like, you know, I got a bunch of quail eggs. Um, and I got a bunch of quail. You want some birds and some and some eggs? I'll give you a big box, like 50 eggs. You can try to incubate them. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, so I went and got like a $75, <laughs> you know, small little incubator that I'm using right now for ducks. Um, two years later, works works like an effing charm. It's It's beautiful. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I took my, I took my nice. shot at, you know, incubating quail eggs and was, was successful, was unpreparedly successful. Didn't think it would work, but it worked. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And every, I, I mean, everything else has just been, you know, I, I mean, the, the local farm supply store has, uh, you know, they, they have, you know, they have lots of chickens and apparently turkeys and, and ducks as we found out this year. But, um, last year I ordered, um, two dozen, um, duck eggs off uh, fertilized duck eggs off ebay and had them shipped um shipped shipped to where i get stuff shipped to and uh i had like a 50 percent hatch rate mm -hmm. um um for those birds so i got like 13 birds wow. 13 ducks um five or six of them are out there still laying eggs um and then yeah we got another two another two dozen that are in, in the incubator right now um so yeah i mean we're dr drastically increasing the bird population here um and um yeah yeah nice. lots of lots of lots of stuff there but um yeah, I'm kind of rambling. I love talking about birds. Um, I'll have a hundred birds here. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you're really stepping up your, your food production. Uh, you know, as, as we can see, um, with the state of the world and how things are going, man, I, I think it's more important than ever to be doing this kind of stuff and to, uh, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks, uh, that uh are out there i guess they talk a lot about a lot of stuff but like i i think somewhere along the process i i kind of figured out that you know you got to walk the walk really and uh from what from what you're doing man like you're walking the walk and you're showing people a different way to live and how to how to you know, get that self-reliance so that you don't have to be as dependent on the outside systems. So yeah, man, and, kudos and, on that, man. Uh, and like, like I said, like I, I, I didn't really like anything that I learned. It came from like, you know, five minutes of, of, you know, duck, duck, go searches or something. Like it's nothing that anyone else couldn't, couldn't figure out like incubating, incubating bird eggs. Like it, it's, it's, it doesn't vary much between birds. You, it's basically like 28 days. You flip them every, you flip them three or four times a day as often as you can. And you keep it to a certain temperature and the incubator does it for you. So like, it's not hard. Um, a lot, none of the stuff is really hard. It's just, um, I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta want to do it and, just yeah put the put you know put the, the energy and effort into it um i guess is put it that way assholes and elbows is like what one of them, <laughs> my my old bosses used to say um but okay yeah so um all the stuff all the stuff that you're involved in man you got uh, a lot of a lot of great stuff going on and one of them is uh your your Pasnia, the Free Republic of Pasnia. Could you, could you tell me, what's what it what is Pasnia about? What's the Free Republic of Pasnia? Mm -hmm. I see you have like passports you can buy, and then like you can become a stakeholder, I guess, in your community in in the area that you want to have like a community going. Or what's the what's your vision there with Pasnia? Yeah, yeah. So um, again, largely unplanned. Um, so I, I I mentioned the lambs and the goats. That was like you know April twenty uh, April twenty twenty or or thereabouts. Um, well, Henza came to visit in May, and uh, I was talking to him, and I was like, you know, I want to try to have like an event here. Like I don't I, I I don't know how why the hell people would come out here to Southern Illinois, um, but like maybe I could convince them to come out here. So like I'm gonna try that bonding fest, and um, you know within a month or so it turned into like I was declaring my independence from the USSA, and it was the Free Republic of Pasnia. Um, so it happened pretty quick. Um, and for, for the, for the audience out there, it's PA, PAZ, um, is the acronym for a freedom strategy building, building permanent autonomous zones. Um, so, so fixed locations where we can exercise our autonomy, um, without the threat of, um, you know, the threat of coercion, um, per se. Um, uh, so yeah, this is, um, so I've got, what we've got here is Veritas Pasnia. Um, the, the idea is it's, it's, it's the first free country in existence. 
Um, but it's a geographically independent country. Um, so what that means is that, so Veritas Pasnia is here, um, you know, an hour and a half northeast of St. Louis. Um, there's a Roots Pasnia in, in New York. Um, there's a, uh, um, a uh, why can't I ever remember, um, Fox something or other in, uh, um, in Michigan. And um, there's, uh, you know, a couple, couple others scattered throughout the world. So it's a, it's a decentralized country, essentially, a decentralized second realm um, with, you know, kind of the, kind of the mocking the, the, country's, the country's thing um, while doing it. Um, so we've got like our passing Department of Freedom, like I said, like like you said, we've got passports. Um, we've got uh, we've got our head of the passing Department of you know our our head of the uh, you know Pasni Immense is uh, working on uh, you know pyramid shaped coins now, um, Pasni coins. So um, I mean it's a totally legitimate operation, but it's it, it doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> um, it's uh, part of its culture jam. <laughs> uh, so um, so you mentioned how how it came about. I, I kind of I, I kind of got off off track there, but um, so yeah, the the Free Republic of Pasni. Um, the uh, so, yeah, Vani Fest. Yeah, that's what I was getting, getting at. Um, so yeah, Vani Fest turned into the Free Republic of Pasnia, and um, at Vani Fest we had uh, a ceremony that I called the uh, the Rebirth of Freedom ceremony, and um, I uh, you know I gave a speech. We had a, a Constitution signing, um, which is um, behind me. If people are looking at the video, it's what's in the mirror behind me, um, taped up there. Um, but so uh, we had a uh, you know Constitution signing, and uh, you know it was a pretty a pretty wild event. Um, yeah, 25, 30 people out here. Um, it was, uh, it was incredible. It was incredible. So, um, you know, we birthed, uh, you know, the second realm network that's, you know, currently, you know, in the process of being built. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's the, that's kind of the, 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 the um, the brief overview. Um, it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a very overall, it's a very overarching thing. Yeah. But you can answer whatever questions. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I see a lot of, you know, stuff that you guys are doing, like, uh, I, guess, I guess, like you have like a department of health and you're doing, uh, I saw that you had one of these HHO generators from like George Wiseman yeah. on there. Aquacure. Yep. Which is that right, I, right behind that me. I've been, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've been, uh, interested in, in George Wiseman's work with the, uh, uh, HHO and electrically expanded water. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. have you guys, ha have you used that and have, have you seen some positive benefits from using that? So, yeah. So, um, I got it put together and you started using it for the first time. I think it was last Friday. Um, so I've been doing, I started out for the first week as George recommends and, you know, I've, my pursuit of health has not been a sprint. It's been just kind of like a slow walk. Um, so like I, I've started out like three, three minutes of inhaling the Brown's gas for five minutes. Uh, five minutes three times a day and uh, just in the past couple of days i started um just upping it to 10 minutes whenever i do it and i'll probably just start doing it a lot more um throughout the day and then also whenever you um are inhaling the browns gas it's um as you said it generates uh, it generates the um, electrically expanded water the hydrogen rich water so you drink that too um so i've been mm. drinking that as well um a couple containers i don't know what they are like quartz a couple of quarts of it a day or thereabouts um, so, um, I mean, I haven't noticed anything necessarily per se, like you can tell, like when you're inhaling it, like, um, like you can tell, um, you can definitely tell. Um, but, um, as George says, like he's been doing it, he's been doing this for like 20 plus years and he's still noticing things going away. So like, it's not something that happens. Um, you're, you're, you're basic, you're, it's, it's like with, I, I talk about cell salts a lot too. Um, and it's like you're, you're rebuilding, um, where, where with those you're rebuilding the body at like a tissue, um, you know, cellular, cellular level, like from the, you know, from the foundation, it's very much the same thing with, um, you know, with hydrogen being, you know, one of the, one of the five or six, um, you know, main macronutrients, um, that a lot of people, um, have issues, um, issues of AS pertaining today, um, apparently. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you're talking about the second realm and, mm -hmm. um, for my audience out there, would you, would you mind explaining what the uh, yeah. second realm is and, and, uh, you know, what, uh, well, you're setting up there for the second realm as far as, um, I guess, building just like a kind of an infrastructure for uh, how folks can have a have a market in the second realm. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, yeah, there's a lot. It's a lot of terminology. That's what I spend most of my time doing over the past. That's what I spent most of my time doing over the past few years, basically just defining terms and introducing people to concepts, um, and learning as as I as I you know dig into them myself too. But, um, but uh, so yeah, the the second realm. Um, if we're gonna talk about the second realm. Like I'll talk about the first realm, and the first realm is the the Serval Society. Um, you know, the statist Serval Society, as Rayo called it back in the 1960s. Um, it's that, that it's the, the main society. We, we know what it is. I mean, it's, it's why you do a lot of the stuff that you do. Um, it's why I'm sure a lot of people here, um, you know, listen to your, your podcast is, 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 you know, because the, we need solutions to solutions, you know, in defense of, you know, that society um, whose foundation is coercion. Um, so the second realm, on the other hand, is um, the second realm is, um, you know, the building a parallel society, per se, um, where we have all of those same necessary critical human institutions. Um, but built upon a foundation of peace, um, truth, and volunteerism. Um, so, like, obviously, uh, you know, health is important, right? Um, so, like, uh, you know, but <laughs> actual real modalities, you know, real effective modalities are important. Um, so instead of Babylon Pharmaceuticals, as I call it, we have the Pasadena Department of Health and Wellness. Um, so um, what's another uh, another example? I mean, any other, um, we've got the Pasadena Department of Freedom, which is, issues the passports and handles... Um, handles certain affairs. The Pasadena Department of Tourism handles events here um, at uh, at Veritas Pasadena, which our, our first one is actually coming up um, this weekend, actually, um, our, our spring camping events. Oh, cool. Um, for Yeah, for vetted self-liberators um, and Pasadenians. Um, there'll be some folks out here. It's going to be going to be a good time. Um, so, yeah, the Pasadena Department of Tourism handles all that, uh, all that stuff. Um, and uh, then, I guess, get, get, move, moving beyond that, uh, um, you know, all the food self-sufficiency items, um, infrastructure beyond that, so, um, like one of our major um, missions of this year has been in the digital second realm, actually. So, um, you know, we've, we've got Veritas Pasney here, which is a physical second realm, um, but there's also digital second realms. Um, so, um, for example, like we've, we've been, uh, we just recently started selling ghost phones um, and ghost pads on the LUA Publications website. So these ghost phones are, are de-Googled um, Google Pixel um, 3As. Um, with Calyx OS, so they're like they're they're privacy phones, um, ghost phones out of the box. They work incredible, um, and um, you know you can run easily run v, run all your data and traffic over VPN and Tor, um, and uh, you know really take control of your of your privacy, which is which is a critical element um, to, to the second realm. Um, beyond that, um, the ghost pads, um, another feature. We'll have freedom boxes at some point, which um, I, I I still have yet to test those out, so I'm not too knowledgeable on that myself. Um, but, uh, but we will, I will hopefully have those soon, but, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been building, you know, I guess working on, um, a lot of this infrastructure and the freedom box infrastructure will, um, with one click can be turned into mesh network nodes too. So, um, yeah, it's really, it's, it's very, very much in, in its infancy. It's, it's year two at Pasni as I call it, um, year two and, um, lots, you know, lots, lots in the works and, uh, big visions, um, like uh, yeah, big, big visions. Our own, yeah, like you're saying, wow. our, our own infrastructure, um, not not reliant upon, um, yeah, the, the centralized ones. Yeah, yeah. I um, we were talking a little bit before we started, but uh, met uh, Sec uh, a while back, and and he was telling me about something that you guys were working on, an idea, I guess, a concept of. Um, a delivery, yeah. some kind of a delivery using uh, um, in the second realm, you know, mm -hmm. if people are traveling or whatever, maybe you can uh, pick up a delivery or whatever and, you know, maybe help get you to the next spot or something, you know, if you can help deliver something. I thought right. it was a pretty cool idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess um, I, I could I could mention I could mention that too. Um, that one of the one of the reasons why um, I think like a de like a decentralized second realm network like this is viable, um, is is you know on the back of Vanu, um, mobility is a is a, a critical component. So Rayo, his first lifestyle change was being nomadism. Um, he just he traveled around and lived in a camper mounted you know on a you know mounted on his pickup truck. So there are a lot of nomads in the network in the network mm -hmm. now. There's a lot of people that drive for work already in the first realm. So. Um, yeah, the passing department of transportation is obviously a natural, you know, a natural 
uh, you know the development of this and and there's uh um yeah there's a there's a telegram cha- a, a telegram chat um that's that's been opened up for this too um i i know it's been successful at least once because second i've have uh, you know made a, a successful transaction um or i guess a successful delivery um exchange so um it's enough for the proof of concept is there it's basically basically now um yeah it's just uh building out the network um Building out that yeah, building out the network and um <laughs> yeah, making it making it where oh, yeah. where, where where it's actually feasible to have a, a an actual actual you know like nationwide per se countrywide logistics network because it's not a super easy thing to do. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely one of those uh, things. Like, how how do we how do we make it easier for people to unplug i guess i don't know like uh it, like a lot of the stuff that you're doing is like paving the way man like kind of on the front edge of uh some of these dis- discoveries and in, in pushing towards a, a better i guess a more voluntary future and so it's always like we're in like the beginning, I guess, iterations, I don't know, of, uh, of building this alternative system here. And, uh, you know, there's always clunks and bumps and whenever you're trying to do something for the first time or trying to get something started, that's potentially could be, you know, a total alternate economy, essentially. Um, so so you talked about that briefly about uh what technology tools you guys are are Mm -hmm. diving into into the digital second realm with the uh with the ghost phones uh what uh i i heard something that you were talking about with these ghost phones that was like what the heck i didn't even know anything that about this that existed uh you talked about something about uh silent dot link uh, is where you can i guess buy with bitcoin a uh an e-sim could you talk about that a little bit what the uh, heck is an e-sim and how how does this work and how why uh how does that happen <laughs> i yeah, don't know i looked into it for a little bit but i'm like how how do an e-sim yeah, not, like not a physical sim card yep correct yeah it's it's uh it's it's crazy um and and, and it's crazy it's all super super easy user friendly so anyway um, yeah, so this ghost phone, um, you can um, at least with these with these with these specific ones that, that we offer, Google Pixels. Um, I think uh, um, there's there's different iterations of these. Um, there's obviously a lot of competition in the free and open source mobile space right now, um, privacy focused ones. Um, so there are other ones out there, but but this specific version has that eSIM card functionality. Um, so yeah, Silent Dot Link is is the website. And they offer you can get mobile you can pay for mobile data as you go with Bitcoin um, or via the Lightning Network or you can actually get like a U.S. or U.K. quote unquote identity, um, which is an actual phone number that you can receive um, text messages and voice calls with. So you can't like make phone calls with the number or whatever. But like if you need two factor authentication for something, um, you could set it up that way. Not say uh, actually yeah you can't oh. can. and Signal works too. I do have Signal set up. Um, um, I do have a, a signal account set up with it. So, um, yeah, it's, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's incredible. It's like $60 a year. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, there's, there's no login. Um, you, um, it just, it opens up a page, you, you pay for it and your receipt is just this order number. Um, or it's just this URL that you save and it has all your information with your phone number and, you know, your payment, your track, your ID, your transaction ID or whatever. Um, and then, um, there's a spot to, um, there's a spot to scan and you just go into that spot on the, on the ghost phone and you scan the digital eSIM card and boom, your phone number is associated with, um, with that phone now. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Wow. Um, it's crazy easy. Um, and like, and again, like that, the freedom of open source, the freedom I came from, from, from spy phones, from iPhones, Apple. And, um, I mean, God, there's such a restricted hell holes. Now I know I knew that before, but now that I've experienced, <laughs> um, open source, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, I can like choose what tower I want to connect to, um, with the silent dot link number two. So it's like, don't want to connect to the AT&T one or the Verizon or so like, there, there's just like, it's basically like no anything, way, anything no way. You so you do. can switch mobile network towers. Wow. <clears throat> in the area. So yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So you can switch the, all the mobile network towers. Yeah. The ones in the area. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty and it's it's come a long way too. Um, it's 
um it's it's come along a long way too um yeah a lot of the stuff wasn't possible like you were you're you're talking a little bit a little bit ago that like uh, you know walking the walk is important but like there there's there's a lot of like theoretical concepts and like frameworks that need laid before action be, can be taken and especially like in this open source technology space like it was really really comp complicated to do these things um really before like last year um like even like the uh um, I'll mention the Bitcoin space. That's another one I've been going really deep into the Bitcoin privacy realm with uh, with things like Sam uh, with Samurai Wallet, which I'm now enabled with now, now that I'm on Android because that's only on Android. So, um, okay. But uh, I like uh, so there's the the ghost phone the the ghost phones which are super easily user friendly to use. Um, you have the freedom boxes, which that's the, the purpose of that too, is basically um, you have a user interface with, with one click installs and, out, and running apps. So you could run, um, I'm not going to get all into it now because I, I don't even know how it's going to look completely at the passing versions of these. But um, a, a lot of this stuff has gone to a point where it's, where okay. it's, where it's really user friendly is, is, is the point. That's what I'm trying to get to. So um, like we offer these ghost phones. Um, Jamin, um, like there's a, there's some of these similar ones, like people, like there's outfits I'll charge 350 or 400 bucks for these. Um, and we charge 250, um, cause the, and, and this is the, I think it's 259 with, for, with, for the shipping now. And the reason for this is, um, the, I guess the, the privacy, um, architecture that Jamin's, um, I guess putting together and trying to, to put out, um, which is very complex and hard to explain much like Pazni is, um, like the whole overarching concept. So I, I understand where he's coming from on that one. But um, it might require you might it might you might need to have multiple phones for different purposes. So like if you need two or three phones, like you can't be spending like five hundred bucks on three different phones, right? So um, these things are you know um, yeah. So yeah, that's the the purpose of it too is we're we're trying to get these into the hands of folks um, because um, we're 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 also building out our infrastructure too, um, or I guess our our communications and uh, networking infrastructure. So um, I, I think a lot of important framework is being laid right now. Um, a lot of foundational work. Um, I mean, again, I don't know what it's going to transpire into. I can't foresee, I, like, I, I, I couldn't have foreseen th this happening a couple of years ago. I couldn't foresee, um, w what's transpiring right now. So like, I don't even know what the hell is going to happen in, in, you know, a handful of years. So I'm not, I'm not closing off possibilities as I've said before, but, um, I think a lot of, a lot of important foundational work is being, being done right now. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of define myself as a, as an optimist. Uh, I, one of my listeners got me into uh, Robert Anton L Wilson. He had a, he had a quote where he says, uh, "I define myself as an optimist because pessimists never get anything done." And I think, uh, I think that's important that, you know, while we're trying to build something as an alternative to the current system that we're living in. I think we kind of have to we have to remain optimistic and and push for these new ideas, different ways of doing things, um, and you know try to get the try to get the real solutions out there. Now these D Google phones, uh, that is an excellent price, man. Like uh, we at the activation tour, Ramiro and Romani is doing these different uh, D Google phones as well, and then um, I guess they're also based on like the the Android uh, Pixel or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other option I know of is like one of these Linux based phones, I guess, like the uh, I think it's called the Librem or something like that. Yeah, but. Um, but yeah, wow, that that's a really great price for uh, one of these D Google phones. So it comes without any of the any of the Google stuff installed, and it's all running off of what you're calling what you, this. You call it the cat. It said it's Calix OS, is what Correct. it's called. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so Calix OS is another. Um, it's it's a more user friendly. Um, it comes it comes uh, um, as Jamin explained. I don't know anything about graph. I've, I haven't done Graphene or Lineage myself, but they come more. Um, they're for more advanced users, um, where you have to basically set up everything from scratch um, per se. That's that's the, the impression that I've gotten. Whereas Calyx comes with um, really good privacy tools already pre-installed. Um, so um, so that that's a that's a major benefit. And yeah, as you're saying, the the de googled version of it. Um, which yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, Jamie mentioned it and I, yeah, I, I point it out every time now that, you know, like the, w what you have to do now, like if you want a de-googled phone, you have to buy a Google pixel. Um, like that's like where we're at in, 
in, in the world <laughs> um is is that's like yeah that's that's where we're at um but uh uh yeah so they they, they run calyx os um, um but they also have this it's called micro g and this is this is the functionality that allows for the eSIM card, I think. Because I think that requires a Google dependency, which Graphene or Lineage, one of the two, um, is just working on uh, on putting out. I saw I saw him put out on Twitter a couple of days ago. Um, but uh, so yeah, th this has Micro G, which allows um, it fulfills that Google dependency, but it anon anonymizes all the data that's that's released. So it changes out the I think the IMEI number, which is the number associated with the the one that tracks all the information on the phone, like associates all the information with the phone. It randomizes all that information, the tracking. Um, the all that all that stuff before it sends it off to Google, so you can still use, um, uh -huh. like I said, the eSIM card. You can still use uh, some of the apps. Um, Aurora, the Aurora App Store uh, is on there, which is basically like a Google Play Store, um, <clears throat> where you can download Google Play Store apps. Um, and some of them require, um, some of them have Google dependencies. So this allows you to, um, to use, so if you want to allow um, some of those on your phone, you you can. Um, there's um, I guess the only thing to really the, the only thing um, to keep in mind is that the more the more things you put on there, um, the more areas you, you're vulnerable to attack. It's a more I guess the the, the terminology is a higher higher uh, you know attack vector, higher attack surface. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean it's it's been a fun realm to get into. Um, and and as you're saying, and I'm happy you pointed it out. There's there's competition in, in, in the in the and I guess the privacy space, and I'm so happy to see it because um, there wasn't a lot of competition. Um, back in 2015, um, there was, yeah, there, there wasn't, there was, I mean, there, there was, but, um, we've got, we've, it's definitely advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think another one is like the clear phone, I guess, uh, somebody came into, um, I, uh, part, I've got a little freedom cell group going and we had somebody come and do a presentation on, uh, on the uh, the clear phone, but uh, maybe if you're up for it, maybe we can have you do a presentation on this uh, ghost phone or something sometime to our group, um, okay. if if that might be possible. Um, Sounds awesome, man. But um, but yeah, uh, you talked you you talked a little bit about uh, vetting people for Pasnia. Like, what what is your process like? Because um, cause I've been talking about within my community here is, um, in our freedom cell, we've got somebody that's working on, a um, what's called a, a PMA or a, uh, a private membership association and, um, working on building a community on his land. And one of the things that, you know, kind of thinking about bringing in forming community, at least in a physical location is um who you're going to bring in because i i've interviewed other guys that have done projects where they've started a community or they've started some kind of activist group or whatever and you know you just invite in whoever can help basically because you're just looking for people to help right yeah you, you, but you need, uh, you need, that usually yeah. kind of doesn't doesn't it doesn't yeah if you if you need like you need libertarian or anarchist per se well those not minded people and there's not that many of them so you can't really be that selective if you're gonna do some of these bigger projects but yeah go ahead not to not to cut you off yeah and yeah yeah that's fine man uh and it's like um there's always something that ha you know somebody comes in and kind of is a disruptor or whatever so. Uh, you know, thinking about how to do some kind of community, you know, we're trying to come up with some type of different, uh, uh, some type of way of vetting. And so far we've come up, uh, come up with for this community, uh, it's basically um, a, a, a couple in their land and they're going to have an, like a, an internship program essentially, and which would be like a year long. And then once you make it through that, then uh, basically you get vetted from there to come into the community. But uh, but what's the what's your vetting process look like for for Pazia? Like what's a what's a solution that you guys have for for vetting people that you know want to interact with the you know the second realm and and stuff at Pazia? Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So, so basically just, um, just very, as I, as I put in all the, all the PASI Department of Freedom or Department of Tourism announcements, um, the, I mean, the vetting procedures, like we have, we have to know you personally, um, per, we have to know you personally and invite you, or, um, we have to find a, a, a colleague in common that can vouch for, for your reputation. Um, so that, that's the way we, we do things for events here. Um, as far as, um, I guess just speaking more broadly on the subject though, um, and this is where like, Maybe my my situation isn't as helpful to to some folks because I like I, I didn't really I, like, again like none of this shit was planned, um but so like I I, I started Elliot yeah. Radio back in 2015 and found anarchism and then um, towards the end of 2015 I heard about freedom festivals uh, the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest in particular, so I went that I went to that for the first time in 2015 and have gone every year every single year since, so like I've got like 30 plus people that like I've known for you know five plus years. Um, who I, um, you know, trust, you know, trust with my life per se, you know, essentially, um, that, you know, like over the course of like five years, I guess, like you see how people, I mean, over the course of five years, people, you know, pretty much face most things. I I don't know. Anyway, um, you, you can get like five years is a long time. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what I call it. The the first layer in, um, in the circle of trust. And then for like event for like Vani Fest for events here at Pasnia, then this first layer um, people that I trust, they, they, you know, they know, they understand what's going on here. They understand they, everything's, you know, understood. Um, if they invite someone in and something happens, it falls on them. Um, so like, it's basically s- slowly expanding out where like, you know, one or two people is brought, is brought in here and there. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and then again, like we aren't, we aren't even at the point yet where we're trying to build like a physical community here on the property. I kind of foresee it just happening organically and spontaneously. Like there's, there's a, c- a couple of few families that we have in mind. Um, but, um, I mean, we don't know how that's going to look yet. Um, we aren't necessarily at, yeah, like I said, at that, at that point yet, like, uh, in the past, I have, I have a stakeholder bulletin I put out, which goes through, like, it's very, it's, it's a more wordy version of like, um, of like an, a, a, a website overview. So if any of your audience is interested in checking that out, um, I, uh, I go through, yeah. um, I go through, um, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought and I mentioned it. And I mentioned the bulletin. Um, uh, yeah, your your stakeholder your stakeholder bulletin talking about. I guess uh, we we're talking about the vetting process yeah. and everything. Yeah, I don't know what the bulletin would have to do with the um, with the uh, with the. Um, oh, anyway, no, no, that's that's what that's what I was getting at. So there's a there's a three what I call the three stage Pasnia vision. We're in stage two right now. Stage stage one was the food cell sufficiency part, which we're we're still not quite there yet, but we're like we're pretty much there and we've got like, we've got it laid out. Like it's, we, we can see the, we can see the vision ahead of us per se. Um, so that's, that's stage one where we're through that. And stage two is where we are now, which probably be a couple few years, but, um, it's, uh, basically, um, you know, a model for taking, you know, a homestead like this off grid. I'm not sure how that's going to look necessarily, but, um, but yeah, we like water, um, energy, um, health and wellness, all of those things, taking all that from the first realm into the second, um, and then also expanding the second realm network digitally and physically. So trying to get more um, homesteads um, or more homesteads or temporary autonomous zones um, on board, you know, to join the, pa- the vetted PASNIA network. Again, it's, 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 it's vetted. Um, and um, you, you can, <coughs> um, obviously we leave it. There, there's some, again, we, we, we have some of these in the networks now. There's some that are more restrictive on access. Like ours, we only allow... A, a, I mentioned what our what our you know procedures were our, our restrictions. Um, there are some that are more you know that are yeah. lesser than that, um, and there's some in between. So it's all up it's all up to the individual, um, you know, up to the individual or the the location in question. But uh, yeah, we're trying to expand it in the physical and in the digital realm. Um, hopefully, have uh, you know a new a new website out um, towards the end of the year with uh, um, you know our own our own self hosted encrypted chat platform. Um, off of Telegram, although I think we'll probably still stay on Telegram regardless, but um, trying to move off of that eventually and transition off of it. Um, but uh, yeah, just taking, you know, making making the uh, digital second realm resilient um, as much as we can. I, IPFS nodes um, to, you know, backup content like yours, um, like ours, um, make it available, keep it around. Um, and yeah, all these things are really, uh, yeah, really, really important. And that's where our, our focus is, is on right now. And then, yeah, stage three. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I think it'll probably happen organically and spontaneously. Um, the right people will come at the right time, as they kind of have mm-hmm. over the past few years. So, um, yeah, it might not it might not like it might not answer your question, and it might not be that helpful. Because, um, so yeah, I guess the this the the solution is to go to freedom festivals for five years and 
And then, and the, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to replicate. Hey, man, I... Yeah, no. Uh, so, so you're talking about Midfest, I'm guessing. Is that the uh, is that the event that uh, Mike Swatek uh, uh, created or whatever? So that's that's Midfest. Um, that's in Oklahoma. Um, I'm talking oh, about okay. the uh, the Midwest piece. Oh, okay, Midwest, that's, that's uh, something which different. Is in Michigan. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This one's in Michigan. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man. I, I mean, I started to go to some of the conferences in like 2019. I started with Anarchadelphia hmm. and then, um, in 2020, I went to, uh, final league and went to Anarchapoco. I'd been wanting to go for a long time, yeah. but actually getting to meet people in person, man, there's like no substitute for that. And, um, uh, I, I tell everybody if they have a chance to be able to go to, to one of the events to go and, and just, you know, like you said, when I guess when you, I guess you just kind of were had to, uh, you went with Henza down to Acapulco. It wasn't really planned, but like, you know, if you have maybe an opportunity like that to go on an unplanned adventure or whatever, um, and maybe attend one of these Liberty events and conferences, uh, I think there's really no substitute for getting to meet people face to face and, there's like an energy exchange there and just actually getting to talk to mm -hmm. people that like understand what's going on in the world and they're trying to do something about it and trying to, trying to do something in a positive and push things in a positive direction. There's a, there's a, something really cool that happens there when you get to actually meet people face to face. Yeah. And, and I guess I should further elaborate that like, um, so it, um, if people go to pazian.com forward slash sign and look at the Declaration of Independence, the Pazian Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, um, it's not very like it's it's uh, it's culture jamming impartially. So it's it's not all meant to be taken seriously. But the con I mean, it, it's it's all it's all serious there. Like anyone who's um, who vis who comes to Veritas Pazania um, or who joins the Pazania network has had to have already forced for the use of coercion. So. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that, okay. like, that's a uh, um, that's a. Uh, um, you know, that's a cri critically important thing. So, like, anyone that we associate with here, we have events here. Um, we've got a few official ones and then, you know, a couple of scattered ones throughout the year. If people are interested in, in checking those out and getting vetted, pazania.com um, forward slash Um I mean, uh, um, there's – so that so that's uh, – <clears throat> so if we know someone in common, which it's usually not hard to find someone in common that can vouch for your reputation that we can – that we both trust, know and trust. It's not that big of a community I've, I've come to find out. Um and um, the other the other thing we're we're talking about freedom festivals. Uh, if people want to get vetted to come out to events here at Veritas, they can come out to the Motus Peace Liberty Fest, and uh, um, we'll have the Pazni table up with Elia Publications books and everything, and come out and talk to us, and we get a good feel, um, get a good five from you, and uh, um, then yeah, you'll probably get an invitation out. So um, yeah, there's there, there's different ways, and and it may it is it may be a pain may, may be a pain in the ass for um, you know in a case in a, in a scenario or two. Um, but, uh, you know, it's important. Um, it's important when, you know, we want to deal with people that have forced on the use of coercion. We want to, you know, we want to, as you're saying with, uh, you know, meeting like-minded people at freedom festivals, like that's the only people that we associate with here. Um, so not only is it like just incredible to do that, like, you know, once or twice a year when you go to these, to these events or however, however, however often it is. Um, but like, just if you're consistently only, or I guess consistently, mostly associating with, um, you know, with folks, um, of that caliber per se, um, I'll put it that way. So, yeah, it's 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 incredible. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's what I call a liberated lifestyle. Um, you know, building resilient lifestyles um, outside of the first realm, um, and yeah, just uh, cut it, cutting ties. Cut you know, cut, and it, it, yeah, it doesn't have to happen overnight. Um, it's just slowly cutting ties as you can, um, and uh, yeah, having fun. Having fun is really important. Um, and uh, yeah, people go to the web, the Pazni website, they'll, they'll, they'll yeah. see that we like we like to have fun. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we had, uh, one of the guys in the chat is saying that, um, there's something, something called matrix is what he's saying. Uh, easy to self host and encrypted is what he's saying. Um, and then, uh, they're also saying in the hive community, there's something, something called three speak. And I guess they're, they're doing some stuff to tie content to IPFS um so they just want to mention that hmm. um so uh 
yeah you, i went through some of your some of your videos and uh i thought uh i thought this one was was pretty cool you had uh paul rosenberg on mm -hmm. uh which i'm a big fan of myself uh and um i i think probably one of the 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 big problems that that we face right now is uh you know, uh, Jesus was talking about that uh, my people suffer for their lack of knowledge. Uh, and you guys went into a pretty cool discussion about how uh, Jesus and, and the modern Christian doctrine don't really don't really align with each other, uh, which I found to be uh, pretty cool because it's like uh, if you really look into like what Jesus was talking about, uh, Jesus uh is an anarchist in my opinion mm -hmm. um so uh so yeah anyway uh i thought that was a really great great episode that you guys did together i don't know if you have any like um uh comments on any of that <laughs> yeah i guess i guess i'll mention it was i i, I still i still remember and obviously i just re-listened to it but i recalled it and it was it's comical but like we did we start out the conversation the first thing that paul said essentially was well, the first thing we have to do is separate Christ from Christianity, which um, I thought was just, uh, I mean, I mean, I, it's, yeah. I obviously like it, you can understand his take if you listen to it, but I could see that like t flipping someone off very, very early on. But um, anyway, I don't know how you could ever be mad at Paul, um, the way that he just approaches things. But um, anyway, yeah, it was it was it was, it was pretty, yeah. pretty crazy. I, I interviewed him um on his book and we kind of talked about, uh, you know, crypto anarchy and cypherpunk and history and stuff and and what he what he'd done. Um, we that we did a digital interview, and then four or five months later, he lives in he lives in Chicago, and uh, I used to live a couple hours north, a few hours south of uh, south of Chicago. So we met up at a fellow anarchist house, and I recorded that interview that you're talking about with him, where we talked about um, yeah, uh, we talked about um, you know modern marriage, uh, you know Christianity, and you know original Christianity, and um, the Bible being natural law, Jesus being an anarchist, and uh, then in in one of Paul Paul Rosenberg's fictions but book, fiction books. Um, a logic of wafering man. He goes into a lot of these. He goes into a lot of these discussions um, on like modern marriage, and, like modern marriage, and, and uh, the way sexuality is treated. Um, and it's a really, really interesting. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I came across that book um, on interplex.net. This like this. It was this, this anonymous book published on this really like this cypherpunk website. And uh, I read it, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, just absolutely incredible. And it, like just in terms of like the crypto anarchy stuff, and then like to like go into like these really deep conversations and like deep thoughts um i guess yeah deep topics um it's incredible and paul paul's one of the few guys that can go that can go that deep in all those areas um so yeah it was, it was yeah. Incredible, incredible to meet him and um hopefully he he's, I, I sent him an email just uh um a week ago or so he's uh, he's got an invite to all the all the pasney events he's, he came out to one of the midwest peace liberty fest one, uh, one of the midwest peace liberty fest ones um so hopefully he'll come out oh, here cool. at some point but uh, uh yeah love paul <laughs> So, uh, Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, you said that was in Michigan. What part of Michigan is that in? Um, so this year it is, I think it's Gaines, Michigan. I'm pulling up the website now. Um, but yeah, the website's mplfest.org. Um, and I will, yeah, it's a work in, pr uh, the website's not, uh, I don't think it's up, it's ready to go yet, but it's July 21st to 25th this year. And I think it's, I think the town is Gaines, Michigan. Um. So, yeah, yeah. okay yeah i got fa i got family up there in michigan man Ugh. so i might have to come check that out this year oh yeah yeah it's it's the one it's the one i make sure to go to like it's it's like if i do one thing of traveling um per year it's 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 going to that festival um so yeah it's it's, it's been de it's definitely been um it's definitely been impactful in my life and everything that's transpired now so um, yeah, I can't rec recommend it enough. I've been to some other one. I've been to some other ones too. Um, had good times at Adam, but, um, there's just not, there's, you know, that pull back to, to the MPL fest for, for whatever reason, for whatever reason. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I was, uh, hearing you guys, uh, talk about, I think uh, one of the concepts that I've heard you talk about was is a concept called the no tell. Mm -hmm. Is that like uh, could 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 you talk a little bit about what 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 the no tell is and like mm -hmm. uh, you know I've 
you were talking about like maybe having these like boxes, I guess, at the hotel where you, I guess you could open the box to be able to uh, exchange goods with people and things like that. Um, yeah. So, so these were, um, so this was uh, some, some, uh, so many of these really incredible conversations are literally just sparked by people talking in the Pazian committee correspondence. Um, so this one, there's an, uh, there's a, a piece of crypto agorist fiction um, called hashtag Agora. And uh, in that book, there's the, the concept of a no tell. Um, and uh, the idea is, um, and then there's also in, in, in Second Realm, in the nonfiction version of that, there's the double blind trading um, stations, which I think is what you're alluding to, but that's a, that's a different thing. I'll, I'll get to that in, in a moment. Um, but, okay. uh, but the no-tells, the, the, the idea is that you have like this nondescript place, or I guess it, 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 could, be, it could be different things. Um, people can you know, come up with their own you know, unique um, you know, applications for their custom situations, but... Um, I guess just a, an abstract overview um, of what what one of these could look like is, um, you know, like a nondescript, uh, you know, um, nondescript house, which has like six, six or eight rooms in it. And each room is um, locked with a digital lock. Um, and it's not advertised as a hotel. But for people who know, they can, can they, you know, they can download the, the ghost phone app from f -Droid, um, And then they can um, go on there and find an hotel um, paying Bitcoin. Um, that's been coin joined already on Samurai Wallet on their ghost phone. Um, so for maximum privacy purposes, then they can pay. Um, they can pay for this. Their, you know, they can pay for their room, and then um, whatever it is, like QR code is scanned. They scan the QR code on the or some sort of code or some some shit on the door. It opens up, and um, that's kind of the idea. Is like a nondescript um, temporary yeah. temporary shelter for. Um, you know, traveling agoras, nomads, or or whatever, and yeah, it could expand to to, to things beyond that. Um, you know, for for like trading, um, you could have the same sort of, um, I guess the same sort of access um, access control type stuff, um, but just for the purposes of safely facilitating trade. So um, yeah, and like and like I said, there's there's examples that are ran through uh, second round book on strategy, which um, is definitely one of the uh, is definitely um, in my opinion like one of the most important books on strategy available at this time. So um, I definitely do recommend people check it out. Okay, yeah, wow, that's uh, that that would be really neat. Like um, you know, I'm building a little piece of property and kind of the vision. I have for that property uh, is to set it up as some kind of uh, meeting place and place that folks could come and do workshops and also could be like a, a way of gen generating revenue by setting up a couple little cabins there and being able to uh, do something like you're talking about where folks um, are able to uh, you know, scan a code, pay for the thing in crypto and have a place to stay for the night, uh, with a little cabin or something like that. So, yep. uh, so that was written about in, in a piece of, uh, Agoras fiction. Um, yeah, I didn't know there was a whole lot of Agoras fiction out there actually. Um, well, there wasn't, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't really a whole lot. Um, a lot but throughout the nineties, it was really kind of more like the, the libertarian sci-fi type stuff. Um, and then there was kind of a new breed of anarchist fiction that seemed to come out, you know, like 2005 or, or around that time, um, for whatever reason, I, I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all, all, all incredibly valuable stuff. Um, all incredibly valuable stuff. Um, and I, I guess I'll just mention just as if, if, if people are interested in what we're, what we're talking about now to toss them a few more leads, um, vonnypodcast.com, check out my interviews with Smuggler. Um, who was one of the authors of Second Round Book on Strategy, and who was, um, who I found out from interviewing Paul and from interviewing Smuggler, um, that um, they used they used to run together the Crypto Hippie VPN service, um, like this really hardcore like cypherpunk ran VPN service like multi hop, um, like top notch. Um, it's not around anymore, but like it's um, it's it's not around anymore. But as far as like wealth of information. Um, and the digital second and the digital second round topics. Um, I think he's he's definitely one to look at. I've, I've had him on a few times. Um, but um, I'm trying to see if there was. Um, so you you were talking about having um, 
having those those cabins off grid for people to you know people to rent or whatever um well that's one of the things for the next year or two is as we build out this network we're going to have a um a, a map available for um vetted pasnians so like wherever they are in the in the world i guess um wherever they are in the world they can they can pull up a map or a directory of um, various locations, whether it's a temporary, temporary autonomous zone, like advanced, advanced squat spot in a city. Um, if it's a, you know, self-sufficient homestead, if it's a, um, you know, a, 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 a friendly port for someone for, for a minimal seal boating, um, you know, nomad or something like that. Um, a map or a directory for people to be able to travel and, and have a, have, have a, uh, like-minded place to go, um, outside of the first realm. Um, and like I said, self-sufficient homestead so that, um, you don't need to go to like you don't need to go to the grocery store. So whatever nonsense they're pushing this week or ma or making people to do or not do doesn't matter to you because you just go to your whatever Pasnia is in your area and you go and get your your you know organic produce and and uh, you know your your grass fed you know be beef and whatever and you're good to go. Um, you don't need them. So that's kind of the idea too is to build out this network. Um, yeah, for for those purposes and then also too, Aura and I would like to t would like to do some traveling. Um, at some point, van and eventually sailboat. So we'd like to, uh, you know, have a network built out um, when we uh, when we hit the road or set sail or whatever, whatever transpires. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I talk about this some uh, to my audience uh, a, a lot, which is there's there's multiple forms of capital. You know, that's it's not just capitalism and money, but your social capital is a, is a is a big thing. So. Uh, that includes your network of people that you know that you can, you know, trust, have the same values and, and, and all, all that stuff. And that, um, you know, once you once you have that social network and having a podcast, I find it really helps, you know, kind of build your social network as well, because you get to actually get to talk to other like minded people and, and get to meet them and kind of get to know who they are and everything mm -hmm. like that. So. Yeah, there's multiple f forms of capital that people can think about. And, um, you know, with some of the efforts that, that we're doing here locally is starting to do these, uh, what we're called, uh, we're ca uh, capturing the term from another group uh, that is in our Freedom Cell group, but they do this uh, uh, get shit done weekends, basically, and then kind of building a get shit done crew. And basically, we've been going out and helping each other with our different projects that we have going on in our properties and everything that we're doing and um, and kind of, you know, being a mutual aid network uh, locally. And um, and so, you know, I, that just helps you build trust with other people, in my opinion, and, and it builds that social capital build your network because you know, if that, that person's coming out and helping, you know, on a regular basis, you know, those, those people are going to be there for you if, uh, if you need them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true though. Well, that's, that's all amazing to hear, man. Um, I'm looking forward to having you on uh, the Vani podcast to talk about, uh, um, I haven't, haven't, um, I, I, uh, you're somewhat like, I think segment sec mentioned you a couple months ago and I'd been meaning to check out your work. I've been seeing, seeing some of your stuff on Twitter. Um, so I saw like, I think I saw a post about your mutual aid. Um, yeah, one of your work days and that's incredible. I'm, I'm excited to learn more about that and what, uh, what all you're doing down there too. Um, cause, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people doing, um, a lot of incredible things and it seems like regardless of, uh, you know, the, the reasoning and, and locations and all it's just uh it's you know towards more uh more more empowerment and self-sufficiency and it's good to see yeah man uh i've got to talk to a lot of folks that are in the hive community and that's uh one of the things that i like to do and kind of one of the things i want to focus on more on the podcast here is uh uh folks that are actually like producing things because I, I believe that's one of the things that we're gonna we need to do to be able to you know build this parallel society we gotta start you know moving from being uh more of a consumer based person into being more you know producing more things i believe mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's that's uh, that's definitely true. That's definitely true, and it doesn't mean you have to do everything yourself. Um, 
but I, cause I mean, I outsource, I outsource my tech stuff to Jamin Baconic. I, I openly admit that, that I don't have the time, um, or that I, or I don't, I don't think I have the technological or, um, technological know-how to, uh, um, to do all of the stuff that he does. So I outsource to, to people, to, you know, to, it's okay to outsource to people you can seriously, seriously trust like that. Um, so you don't have to do everything. But, yes, I think it's very important to, to be able to know how to do everything in case you at least ever have to um, have the knowledge to do something. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. So we got uh, somebody in the chat room was asking if, uh, if he could uh, mention – what was the what was the name about the uh, Freedom Fest in in Michigan again? It was a uh, yeah, it's uh, the Midwest, it was the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, MPLFest.org is the website. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, cool, man. Um, so yeah, what if if somebody's here in you know, some of this stuff for the first time, uh, where's a, where's a good place they should, should start? Like what, what's a good place that somebody should start on, on their journey for, for self-liberation? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, that's a good question. I guess, um, what I would probably say initially is, um, there's uh, at vaniapodcast.com. Um, there's a start here tab, um, which will um, take people to what I it's a short little it's I call it a, the Vani Beginner's Guide for Agoras and Beyond, and um, it's a, it's a short little booklet I, I I print out and give away give away at festivals, but it's available there at the website too, and um, it'll lay out the basics and defining terms, tell you why Vani matters, like why you should give it why you should give a damn about a 1960s freedom strategy. Um, why it's relevant to you today. I understand. I understand you got to know why, and I'll tell you why. Um, then um, I, I, I cover, um, I guess there's a little interesting piece there um, about uh, um, uh, ethical enclave trading, um, Rayo's conception of agorism, which actually predated agorism. Um, so I, I actually I found some a, a handful of articles by uh, Sam Konkin um, throughout the, in, in the 70s and 80s, I think it was, or maybe in the, just in the 80s, um, discussing Rayo and Vanu. Um, so I think, um, I think Konkin actually drew inspiration from, um, from Rayo in developing the idea of agorism. Um, and again, Rayo called it, uh, ethical enclave trading. Um, for those who are, it doesn't really matter, but like, I was, I was just curious, like when you're putting these, these pieces together in libertarian history, um, I kind of nerd out about it, but, um, Anyway, um, yeah, the Vani Beginner's Guide is a great great place to start. So you have vanipodcast.com, um, the Start Here tab. Uh, the free Vani Books tab has, uh, you mentioned um, Vani Book One, Rayo's, Rayo's book. Um, that's available for there for free in PDF and audiobook format. Um, that's a terrific place to start. And um, I guess just more generally speaking, I'd, I'd, I'd say I, I always recommend people start at, at episode one of the of, uh um, of the Vanu podcast, um, first season's for the philosophy of Vanu because there's kind of a, a unique libertarian angle per se, uh, to put it p to put it that way, um, to Vanu, uh, and it's it's critical to understand. So we spend 13 episodes on that, I think, and uh, season two is the practice of Vanu, um, but only things that Rayo talked about um, or wrote about um, in his book or um, throughout the um, zines and liber libertarian zines that he contributed to throughout the 60s and 70s. Um, and then season three is the development of Vanu, um, where we um, basically just, uh, you know, update these, you know, these principles and um, lifestyles to, to be relevant in, in this day and age. So um, those would be the, 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 the few things, but the, the best resource, VaniPodcast.com. Everything I, everything I do goes there. If I put out a, pa a silly Pasnia advertisement or promo video, it goes out there. Um, yeah, any, all the articles go out there. Everything goes out there. So, um, it's a good place, good place to, to go to, to find everything else too. Okay, great, man. Yeah. So what, what are you, uh, what are you looking forward to on, uh, the homestead? Like, uh, do you guys like, uh, you got a lot of daily stuff going on there. You guys producing milk, uh, eggs, I guess, and, and, uh, all that stuff going on there. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the thing I'm most excited about at the time or at, at the moment is that, um, you know, it's March. So like, it's still early in the season. It's still not technically spring here. I don't think, um, 
but we're we're already getting just since we we started out last year. But we're we're already getting like ten to twelve eggs a day, uh, mostly duck eggs and a tur- one or two turkeys here and there, and um, yeah, the rest chicken. So like it's it's incredible to start out like the season. Um, getting 10 to 12 and then also knowing that there's 26 eggs in the incubator that'll be, that will, you know, hopefully hatch in the next few weeks. And then we got another 20, 20 plus birds at uh, the local farm supply store, um, that are out there growing too. Um, so that, I think that's pretty much the the thing I'm most excited about is, uh, um, is, is that, um, they're going to be getting, uh, they've they've got the the Pasnia bird shanty is what I call it. They've got that out here now. And so uh, they're going to get, uh, they're going to get a nice carport, um, and a much nicer structure here in the next couple of weeks. And then this area is going to be a garden, which was the entire purpose of having the, all, all the birds in there to tear up the yard, tear up, you know, all the grass and shit in it for a year. And so it'd be ready for a garden. Um, so that's, that's also, excuse me, also on the agenda too. So this would be a couple of the, a couple of the biggest things I'd say. Awesome. Yeah. So with, uh, with all the feed and, and all that going up and price and probably, you know, being hard or maybe harder to find or buy feed, like, are you guys preparing for some of that kind of stuff? Uh, growing a bigger garden, maybe for feed, more feed for your animals or things like that. So we're, we're definitely growing, um, some food for the animals. Um, certainly, but thankfully, like, um, the way, the way this has all worked out is incredible. So like, I, I, I only feed, um, <clears throat> the animals only get organic grains. So obviously that would normally be really expensive and hard to do, especially if you have a herd of a dozen plus lambs, um, lambs and goats. So, um, it works out well. Um, we've got, we've got a distillery, um, family distillery. So we have, um, thousands, of, thousands upon thousands of pounds of, of, uh, of, of organic wheat delivered there. Also like five different varieties, um, you know, a lot. Um, and they order, they order in bulk. So it's super cheap. And then the corn comes from my neighbor. Um, he grows not, not GMO corn on our, on our land. So, um, I just get the corn from, from there. So, um, I've, <clears throat> I've been able to shield myself a little bit from, um, from that, um, side of the craziness. And, uh, again, it's just things working out so perfectly that like, I, I don't, I don't poison animals, um, myself. So like I, I feed them like organic grains. Um, and it would be really hard to do that. Um, I was looking into, at a time I was looking into like 2000 pound totes. Um, but it still, it ended up being like $30, um, per 50 pound for, per, uh, per 50 pound bag. Whereas for the distillery, I can get them for like 20 bucks a bag. So like it makes it super manageable and the corn's not great. I'm not a big fan of corn myself, but, um, if you give half corn and half wheat, then I mean, it works. Um, it works. Wow. So you guys have a, you, there's a distillery there. <laughs> um, there's a distillery, um, about 30 miles, um, from where, where I live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's Oh, what, okay. That's nice, my, man. That's what I call my not real day job is I go and make liquor. No way. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, uh, was looking into making, uh, basically getting a little still and just doing small batches of stuff myself. But, uh, but yeah, that's cool that you get to, uh, you work at the, at the distillery, I guess, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, sure. what do, uh, are you guys making like bur- bourbon or like, uh, uh, whiskey or what do you guys make? Um, yeah, so we make, uh, um, uh, straight bourbon, which I don't think we have any, um, that's gotta be aged for two years. So we, we haven't even been open that long yet. So, um, well, I don't think we've even bottled any of the straight, the technically straight bourbon. Um, but we've, yeah, we make bourbon, um, rye, um, we make a, a, like a four and five grain, um, blend, a whiskey blend. Uh, we make rum, um, we make a, I guess it's called, it's called a, it's, 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 I guess it's a, it's like a, it's like a fire, fireball whiskey type thing. Um, a little, uh, custom recipe that my, my dad put together. And, uh, um, what else, what else do we do? Um, yeah, spice rum, barrel aged rum, um, various vodkas. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Wow. That's cool, man. I dig it. So, uh, 
So yeah, maybe uh, you have you ever thought about uh, giving out merit badges for the people in Fasnia after they uh, complete certain tasks? <laughs> no, um, I have not. Um, I have not, but it would go it would go well with the spirit of Pasnia, I guess. Um, I give myself um, <laughs> fake titles for as one example for, for the listeners <laughs> of the lead astronaut, the Pasnia Secret Space Program. So um, maybe we, maybe we should get into the Pasnia <laughs> like the merit badges <laughs> business too. I know. Oh man, I, I was just kind of bringing that up as a funny uh, thing, but um, but yeah, I uh, it, it's something that. Uh, I've heard about from Paul Wheaton. He's doing this, uh, you know, he's got his homestead or whatever, and he's doing this program called the skip program, like uh, skills to inherit property. And he uh, basically to be able to pass off somebody's homestead property. That's like they built it as a, their farm over time. And they'd like to pass it off to the next generation. Hmm. And, um, basically after they, you know, uh, uh, go through so many tasks or whatever, they give them like these, these merit badges and so that they can, uh, and eventually maybe inherit somebody's land or whatever. So, um, okay. I thought that was an interesting concept. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, well, I don't know how much time you had, uh, tonight, but, uh, but yeah, I have uh, kind of worked through uh, a lot of my questions for you. But uh, uh, is there uh, any kind of other projects or things that I didn't get to ask you about that you're working on that you um, might want to let people know about? Um, I guess um, I'll mention too. Um, uh, I, I also have uh, Liberty and Type Publications, which I, I started I guess it was uh, yeah, 2018 when I was releasing my book, um, Vani, the Strategy for Self-Liberation. So I guess there's that too. I, there's there's my book out there, which people can get for free uh, at liber libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vani book. Um, the uh, paperbacks there, people want to buy from Amazon instead, um, or if they want to download it for free, um, there's a link to do that there too. Um, but uh, yeah, I started the publishing outfit and um, one of the, <clears throat> so th that was the main reason for it was, I, I published my book, and then there was second round book on strategy, which up to that point was just like a text document on the interplex.net website, so it wasn't even a book. So I asked Smuggler um, and you know the interplex IRC chat if it'd be okay if I published it, and he said yes. Um, so I published that one. Um, then hashtag Accor was, publi was published anonymously, so I can't go ask anonymous. Um, so I just went ahead and took the initiative and just published it. Um, so those were like the first, my, my book and then a couple, those couple ones that I thought were just like, they needed to be in book form, form already and, and, and get out to the world. Um, and then there was, as we've talked about a couple of times, the, the old Vano and Libertarian zines, um, and publications. So Rayo, um, the founder of Vanu, um, he founded and contributed to a number of them, uh, like, uh, Vanu Life, um, there's Innovator, Preform, Inform. Uh, Libertarian Connection, which was a bigger one um, back in the 70s. I have, I have a screenshot of one of Rayo's articles um, in the table of contents, um, like just one one below Walter Blocks. So like these a lot like they were all in kind of the same the same circles. Um, it wasn't that big then and it's not that big now. I think at like the largest circulation, it was like three or four hundred people for uh, most of the Vanu zines. So um, anyway, <clears throat> long story short, um, I s one of the other reasons I saw um, a need for a publishing outfit like this was to digitize those and to make them available for free download and then also for folks who want the paperback versions um, those are available too and it also monetizes my efforts um, so I don't have to worry I don't have to like ask for donations like if I can get people like really nice high quality self liberational media you know like in the form of nice paperbacks um, and they can you know help support my efforts too so like they can um, they can get knowledge and or you know good times through like you know anarchist fiction uh, and, and you know good times and inspiration and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. And, uh, you know, we're building the second realm. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, libertyunderattack.com, there's, there's the books. And then, yeah, as we were talking about earlier, the privacy tools are there as well. So, um, yeah, I guess that, that'd be the, the, the other big thing is, you know, uh, definitely check out, uh, check out what, what, we, what we offer there. So, uh, so Liberty Under Attack uh, publications, like, uh, that's... Uh, 
you guys are you guys are not only producing like the I guess the literature, but you're you're going through and you're doing a lot of audio books too, from from what I've seen. Yeah. So, so is yeah. that mm-hmm. so? Those are all all available there as well. Um, yeah. So libertyattack.com. There's um, there there's audiobooks on there. I think there's a, it's the sounds of self liberation bundle audiobook bundle is up there, which is what I called it. The little corny title. Um, but yeah, that's up there. And then also on the Vani podcast podcast feed, um, like the, the, the free audio book for second realm is on there. Um, uh, most of mine is on there. Um, the full, full one's getting done now. Um, currently as we, as we speak, probably, um, I have someone working on that. Um, but yeah, all of them are available for free, um, on that are done on the, on the Vani podcast feed other than brush fire, which is like 16 hours. I can't put that out on there. Um, and then there's other ones, wow. yeah, there's other <laughs> long ones, but, uh, regardless, um, yeah, they're all available, um, liberate, liberate attack.com. Cool. Cool, man. Um, so are you guys, uh, writing any, any of that fiction yourself or is, uh, is that, uh, coming from other people? Uh, so I've got, um, I haven't I haven't touched it in probably two years now, probably since you know like early 2020. Um, but I had one I I was working on for for a year, or so it's um, I mean it's a couple hundred pages. I mean I was I was I was about to just get to like the it was gonna be multiple bo- multiple book series anyway. So I was like you know like I've got a good I've, like this is a good story now like it's pretty long. Um, so like I was gonna kind of add another chapter you know another chapter or two to kind of get the story to a certain spot and then write like a conclusionary chapter. But I haven't, I haven't gotten back to it in a while. So I've got one that I've worked on. And actually, actually, now that I think about it, there is, um, I guess it probably would have been 2019 on the Vani podcast website. I released the first couple chapters of it. Um, first chapter or two. And, uh, um, so if people want to get a taste of it, I, I, I guess I did put out a couple chapters of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully I, I don't know when I'll get back to it. Um, I did, obviously I'd, I'd, I'd have to probably reread the entire thing, probably go through it a couple more times, um, to refresh myself and then, you know, write the conclusion and, um, then the proofreading starts. So that will be the, then it'll really start, I guess. So yeah, it's still, it's still up in the air. Wow. Wow. So did you always, uh, kind of have a talent for, for writing or did that kind of just come to you later? later on i mean um i always i was always a big reader um oh yeah i was always a big reader and i think i wrote like uh when i was in like fifth grade i think i wrote like a 10 page you know short story or something but like other than that i really i I really didn't have that big of an interest in writing when i was in high level indoctrination i was going for journalism but that was only because at that time um i was doing uh i was kind of interested in radio so like that was the angle that i was um, going at it from, but no, like I, I started Elio Radio and I, I I wrote one article and then it just like never stopped. Um, so um, I kind of yeah I kind of fell into it and I, I kind of needed I it was something I needed to get good at and then it also opened up new um, opened up additional avenues like um, for example I'm the editor over at Agoras Nexus so um, been kind of uh, I think uh, I had Brandon on on the Vonnie podcast and he was setting up a homestead in Mexico. I guess he doesn't have internet out there um, on his homestead. So when he's out there working on the homestead, as he has been for the past couple of few months, he's not he's not really working on well, at least on that part of things. So, um, but like so like generally speaking, though, um, over the past couple of years, like I've been making Bitcoin to you know to edit articles. Um, so like that's been like that's been a, a neat opportunity oh, cool. that that's kind of opened up. And uh, then yeah, just all the authors that we that we work with, um, um, you know from you know all sorts of stuff you know from fiction from anarchist fiction like todd borjo's the evolution trilogy um or um oh, what's what's uh um another one that's i guess maybe a little varied i don't know the big book of secret hiding places um by jack luger an old republication that that we put out um there's all sorts of stuff on there um there's <clears throat> um yeah there's there's all sorts of stuff so yeah awesome awesome yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. Are you? Uh, uh, I don't know if I saw that you 
I guess talk to John Bush or whatever. Are you kind of connected? Are you connected with uh, Derek Rose and John Bush? What they have going on with the the Freedom Cell Network and and what they have going on there? Um. So I have uh I, I've spent uh I guess I've I've spent a couple events with with Derek. Um. Yeah, there was uh his conscious resistance tour that um, was at a fellow anarchist house in Chicago, the same one I interviewed Paul Rosenberg's at. Um, and then he, he also, he was also at the MPL Fest. So I've met a couple, I've met, I've met, um, I've met uh, Derek a couple of times and hung out with him. Um, I've interviewed him a few times on, on LUA, a couple of times on LUA and a couple of times on Vanu. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, very, you know, very, you know, Loose, uh, well, I guess actually no. I guess he he did write the forward for for uh, for for my book, Final Strategy for Self Liberation. Uh, Derek uh, Derek Bros did, um, but oh, uh, cool. um, but yeah, as far as as far as John Bush, when I was in Acapulco, I was I had it set up. I it, it didn't end up working out for whatever I, I don't remember what the reason was. But we were gonna meet up and and I was gonna we were gonna talk about some talk about some stuff. But um, it didn't pan out and we never got it rescheduled. So I've I've never actually. I've I've been in the same I've been like at the same parties events as as John in Acapulco, but I hadn't really had had a chance to talk to him yet. So like I don't think he knows me um, knows of me. Um, so um, anyway, no, I mean oh, okay. there's a, there's not really not really any any affiliation. I, I recommend the Freedom Cell Network to. Um, it's it's one of the best. Like I, um, especially over the past like couple of years, um, there's a shit ton of users on the web on that on that platform now. So like. Uh, people are people ask me like, well, how do I connect with local people? It's like that's the first thing. Like, just go sign up there and look at the map, and you'll probably find someone. There you go. Yeah. That's a good start. It's a yeah. lot, lot easier than yeah, back when, absolutely. I, when I got started yeah. back in 2015. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, very difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. For the longest time in my own life, man, I was like, kind of felt like am I the only crazy person around here that believes that the freaking, you know, government shouldn't exist and that we should, uh, you know, all leave, uh, live in peace and voluntary relationships, man. And, uh, and yeah, it ended up, um, me putting my name out there on the freedom cell site and, uh, was actually able to get people to contact me locally. Um, because I, I kind of, took the first step and put my name out there. And then from there, man, I'm like really grateful to be able to bring a lot of people together in the local area. Um, because I look a couple years ago and it was, uh, uh, just me, man. And I was meeting and folks from the hive community, the, uh, people online, um, just, you know, a lot of people are in my, in the community, listen to the podcast. I've had, uh, friends that listen to the podcast from the community come and visit me. But, uh, other than that, man, like in the, in the local area, you know, I found it really difficult to connect with people and find, uh, other Liberty minded people that, you know, wanted, to uh, wanted to do this whole, you know, mutual aid kind of thing and all that. But, uh, but yeah, getting on there uh, personally has helped me grow in our local area in the community. So it's uh, it's been a real, real great thing. And um, and and you you said you're you're building something similar with uh, Pazia and, and how how folks if they want to get involved they can I guess get on get on the the map of like the different. Uh, uh, places that uh are i guess affiliated uh affiliated with Pazian or share the same uh ideals or whatever yeah so the 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 overall yeah the i guess the that that'd be the vision um it wouldn't it wouldn't be a public map um at least not um there i, I think there there'd actually be there'd, okay. be there'd be a couple different versions there'd be the vetted one the vetted ones where like it'd be properties like i, I wouldn't want um veritas um, you know, on the public map, for example, some, some might, some, some do things right. like, uh, what they, there's, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of hip camp. Um, well, it's, it's like the, the right. camping version of, of Airbnb kind of, um, well, there are some places that do like hip camp and if they already have their address out there on, um, like a website like that, then like, what's the, they might, they might be fine with putting it out publicly, for example, um, on like a public map. But, uh, yeah, that's the, <clears throat> that's the, uh, you know, the, 
um, you know, the, the overall, the overall goal, people will be able to, you know, go to, you know, the map or the directory page. Um, you know, they'll click on a location and they'll see, um, you know, the, the name of it, um, you know, such and such Pasnia, what is it? Um, you know, Van Nomad squat spot, you know, what, pro what proxy merchant services are available? Um, you know, like, uh, um, for, for a Bitcoin fee, I'll, you know, get you groceries. You can use this address for a mailing address, um, and pick something up, um, et cetera. Um, you know, length of stay, length of stay, um, you know, like all that information can be laid out. People can decide if they want to, you know, contact the, you know, the, you know, the, the fellow Paznian or, or whatever. Um, and, and again, that's all up to the individual, individual in question. They can do, they can, you know, make it as, uh, um, as open, like they could just, or they, they could just, you know, like put a, if they have, <clears throat> um, you know, a hundred acres in the middle of nowhere, they could just put that spot on the map and just have people like get, make it open to people. Um, or it could be as in, as involved as like, uh, for Veritas Pasnia here, um, we, um, <clears throat> We, I guess the the other the other benefit of the of, of what we're kind of doing here is that like as as you're saying like there's not really um, there's a local farmers market we find a couple of families where we can get some get some things from and it's great um, but we're also kind mm -hmm. of we're also kind of building out um, as far as products that we sell like lamb and you know eggs and um, and mush and you know forage mushrooms and things like that. Um, we'd probably try to sell those to, I guess, to, to Pazni. And so like with the second round network, we're building, like people travel through and, you know, they would need, you know, our products so we're kind of creating our markets too, uh, markets for the stuff that we produce. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, there, there's a lot of ways to look at it. There's a lot of ways to, um, to approach it. And I'm just kind of toss, tossing, tossing that out there, but, um, yeah, and uh, I, I'm hoping that's I'm hoping that's uh, you know the, the map and the directories you know coming soon. The uh, I've got the I've got the directory started, um, but um, yeah, it's really that's that's you know that's what this year this year is all about is uh, getting in podcasts like these and, and meeting folks like you uh, who are out there doing it and you know um, you know connecting with folks and, and seeing how we can we can build out this network and um, again whether it's you know as intimately as you know getting together at gatherings or if it's like just something like the Pasnia seed exchange um where we you know trade seeds like that's that's still a huge step uh in coordination so um that's another thing too the great Pasnia seed yeah exchange. i forgot to mention that yeah yeah i forgot to mention that that i i joined your telegram group uh with the Pasnia seed exchange recently and uh and yeah i guess uh if folks want would want to get involved with that uh uh is that open to anybody that wants to get involved mm -hmm. with that if they yep. want to become become part of the seed exchange yep yep the uh it's t.me forward slash pasnia seeds and pasnia is p-a-z-n-i-a so t.me forward slash pasnia seeds uh and uh yeah if you go in there you can uh um, find the current offerings what people have that they're willing to trade what people are looking for and uh, you can make a post with uh, what you're interested in, what you're looking for. And uh, if you have uh, 3,000 dill seeds or something that you're trying to get rid of, then let's let people know. Maybe someone will be interested or something. Um, and uh, again, proof, yeah. of con proof, proof of concept has worked. We've done, we've we've uh, traded with we've we've made a couple of trades with uh, a couple of Pazians in there. So again, proof of concept works. Uh, we've done it. So. Um, I guess I will just say, like, most of the Pasnia stuff is, is vetted, as we've been talking about. Um, but the seed exchange really isn't, like, um, so, yeah, I guess just keep that in, keep that in mind for, for whatever it's worth. I don't think anyone's going to steal seeds from people in there, but um, it's, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah. I, I can't, I can't, I can't moderate. And all, all those, all deals are dealt with, you know, peer-to-peer, -peer, like, uh, indirect message, so. Um, yeah, people, people, people understand the, the risks and responsibilities. It's all good. And the risks. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you're just, yeah, you're just making, uh, a, uh, a deal with, uh, directly with whoever, uh, you want to trade seeds with or mm -hmm. whatever is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's an illicit, it's a, it's a list yeah, man, I, like I mean, lettuce I... and Dylan parsley and stuff like that dangerous yeah i was i was stuff. yeah i know right? i know right <laughs> well i mean bill molson uh you know i guess he was one of the fathers of permaculture or whatever and he said probably one of the most you know subversive things you can do is uh to to grow a garden and um you know really i think that is uh 
Yeah, I think that is is true. He also, I think he also had a quote something about, um, you know, the all the people that fight the system that they, uh, the very system they depend on. So, you know, when we're out, uh, you know, people are out protesting or whatever. I mean, they're still fundamentally dependent on that very system. So, uh, so yeah, it all starts somewhere. And uh, you know, I was thinking about some seeds that I've grown in the past about. The only thing uh, I have that I guess I could consider heirloom is like uh, okra because mm-hmm. okra grows like wildfire down here in the south. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, Shane, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk to me, man. Uh, it was really great getting to know you a little bit better and, and getting to share everything that you're doing with my audience. So, uh, yeah. Uh, do you have any, uh, well, once again, you want to remind everybody where they can find your stuff uh, and uh, where they can buy your products and everything? Sure, sure. Right on. Thanks. And yeah, it's uh, it's it's been great, man. I'm, uh, I, uh, I always love, uh, you know, I, it's one of the things I love about podcasting and doing shows like this is, uh, you know, making connections with folks. And it's not just about like, you know, having a conversation like uh, it's, it's not just about having a podcast conversation like um, all these conversations lead to, you know, things that things transpiring in physical space and time. So um, that's that's the way that I look at these sorts of things. Um, and yeah, I'm appreciative of, of coming across you. But um, yeah, I guess um, I would just. Uh, um uh, yeah, in terms of uh, where to connect, uh, vanupodcast.com for everything Vanu. And again, all the passing stuff goes out there. Um, vanupodcast.com, uh, for, uh, for books, privacy tools. And I will mention, uh, or as apothecary too. Um, so, um, for example, the comfrey, the comfrey salve that she does, the comfrey is grown here on the, um, on the property. So yeah, she makes some, some pretty incredible stuff. If you just go to libertarianattack.com and um, there's categories at the side. Um, you'll see like books, bundles, um, or as apothecary, privacy tools, and whatever else. Um, so you can yeah check out and peruse. And obviously, we, we certainly appreciate um, anyone uh, you know checking it out and, and uh, making a purchase. And I guess the other thing I'll mention is yeah, Paznia, um, P-A-Z-N-I-A.com. Um, go check out what we're doing. The, the website is a work in progress. It's not a uh, uh, it's not great, but uh, at the same time, the, all the information is there, so you can go learn about what's uh, more about what we're trying to build. Uh, and again, I'd point you in the direction of the 2021-2022 Paznia uh, Stakeholder Bulletin, um, which uh, that will get a get a version two at some point in the near future too. Um, but um, yeah, everything's everything's a transitionary right now, it seems. Um, so just gotta become. I, it's it's the way that I put it is just embracing the chaos, and uh, yeah. Yeah embrace the chaos but yeah man i appreciate, yeah, appreciate, man. appreciate the appreciate the chat and uh that's uh that's 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 all i've got for 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 right now all right shane man i really appreciate you uh in your time and uh i'll make sure to get all those uh links out to everybody uh that's uh listening to the podcast and uh yeah, man, I can't wait to maybe have you back on and maybe get you to come talk to our local Freedom Cell about some of your solutions, especially with the privacy phones. Um, you know, we've been looking at a bunch of different options. I think your uh, what you guys have to offer is pretty awesome. So, uh, so yeah, man, sure. we'll be in touch. And uh, uh, once again, really appreciate your time and coming on and having a chat with me. Hey, it was it was my pleasure, man. Looking looking forward to uh, looking for the next connection, whether it's on yours or if uh, if if I get you on mine before then. So yeah, looking forward to next time. Mom, are all countries coercive shitholes? Most are. Yes, but have you heard of the Free Republic of Poznia? No. What's Poznia? Poznia is the first free country in existence right now, founded upon truth peace, and voluntarism, rather than coercion, as you pointed out. PAUSE itself is an acronym for the freedom strategy of building permanent autonomous zones, places in which we can be free and exercise our autonomy without the threat of force. Oh, cool, so a free country exists. Where is it? Well, unlike the traditional statist country structure, Poznia is a decentralized, geographically independent country. So, in essence, it's everywhere. How do we visit or join? 
Good question. Posnia is a vetted network, so not everyone is welcome. Reputation must be verified and the use of coercion forsworn. But soon, a directory and map, both public facing and private, will be available at posnia.com. And for now, gatherings of liberation in the second realm are already happening at Veritas, Posnia, Roots, Posnia, and Fox Prairie, Posnia, to name a few. Those interested in joining this Posnia Second Realm Network can become founding or honorary stakeholders. In addition to gaining access to discounts and specials at Veritas, and the wider network, other perks exist, such as passports, stakeholder dinners at the consulate, access to healing technologies at the Department of Health, Wellness, special Posnia silver coins, and more. And for those who want to get involved but in a more distant manner, there's also the Posnia Committee of Correspondence Telegram Chat, the Posnia Seed Exchange, and much, much more in store. Grandma would love this. What's the website again? I want to tell her about it. Ha ha ha. That's funny. Grandma's been a stakeholder for longer than you've been alive. But if you wanted to tell your Uncle Mike, the website is posnia.com. And linked right at the top of the page is the 2021-2022 Stakeholder Bulletin. There, he can find a more thorough and wordy explanation of the Second Realm Network currently under construction. You could even invite him to Vanufest 3, a now annual, week-long gathering of liberation at Veritas. This year, it's from September 26 to October 3rd. Sounds like a blast, posnia.com. Okay, thanks mom, anything else I need to know? One thing, dear. Always remember, Vanu is yours for the making and the Second Realm is yours for the building. See you in the second realm. that's really the issue that we're dealing with with these you know ghost phones ghost pads whatever is that there's no way that you can organize with with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time mm -hmm. people are literally wearing wires all the time they have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things that's never going to work You know, I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone, again libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. LibertyUnderAttack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story. Find your freedom.